The local people who live around the Gobi Desert warn of death worms that can strike an unsuspecting traveler dead in a heartbeat. Even their camels fall victim to these worms. But little evidence outside of folk legend exists for these death worms. So what are the chances that they are real? Before we begin this cryptozoology episode in earnest, we need to establish a couple core truths about the world. Humans don't live everywhere. We cover a tiny percentage of the Earth. Where we have cities, there is obviously less of other species. Just because we have mapped out the surface of the world pretty thoroughly does not mean we have explored the entire planet. The ocean depths remain largely uncharted, and new species of marine life are found every day. The atmosphere extends 100 kilometers above the surface level. That is more area that we simply can't observe all of. But perhaps most interesting is the underground. Recent discoveries below Earth's surface reveal that there are billions of tons of microorganisms going as deep as five kilometers. However, every time scientists dig deeper, they find more life that lives in even more extreme conditions. Some of these microorganisms can live for thousands of years without moving. There is evidence to suggest that some underground organisms don't even need the sun's energy to survive, which could change the way we understand biology itself. Keeping an open mind is the prudent decision when dealing with the unknown. So what does the death worm look like? The usual estimate has the worm at one meter long with red skin. The Olgoi Korkoi is what it is called in Mongolia. It means large intestine worm, due to the fact that it will lay its eggs in the intestines of the camels it kills. Legends say that it can spew venom so corrosive that it melts metal and one touch of the death worm is enough to kill you. The second description of instant death touch is something you usually hear from sea creatures, like eagles, who can generate electricity in an environment that conducts it. The desert isn't as easy to electrify. However, that has led to one theory that says the worm is closer to a legless snake, scaled instead of soft, but its movements through the sand could theoretically cause enough friction to generate the electric bursts needed in order to kill a human or camel. With a few expeditions into the Gobi Desert turning fruitless, the existence of death worms remains a mystery. Let us look at prehistoric, as well as living, worm-like creatures. Worms were among the earliest invertebrates to exist, and one discovery found a highway of worm tunnels in Canada's ocean floor 500 million years ago. Some worms in the ocean, such as the bobbit worm, could grow up to 3 meters long. A fossil dating 400 million years ago reveals the jaws of a worm, likely an ancestor to modern bobbit worms. This one is estimated to be over 3 meters long. Pyrosomes are massive, hollow, worm-like creatures that can grow up to 18 meters long, though they are actually a superorganism, meaning they are made up of a colony of tiny organisms that all play a specialized role and work together. For pyrosomes, they are all bound together by the gelatinous substance that we see. They also glow when touched and are harmless as far as biologists are concerned. The Portuguese man-o-war is another superorganism, resembling a jellyfish that floats on the surface its tentacles hanging underwater far below. Although their float part usually grows up to 30 centimeters, their tentacles can reach an astonishing 50 meters. Their tentacles are toxic and can be lethal to humans. Sometimes they float in a large group of a thousand man wars Considering the total biomass of the planet, and the fact that worms and reptiles are some of the oldest creatures alive, it is plausible that such a creature as death worms exist. If the theory that the death worm uses electricity then perhaps in the search for them, scientists could utilize scanning equipment that picks up on electronic frequencies. Perhaps even a battery or amplifier set on the ground for a few days could attract these creatures, who likely can read electromagnetic fields. A discovery of a creature that's deadly and elusive almost always gives breakthroughs in our understanding of biology, pharmacology, and the use of deadly toxins medically, and even physics. Although humans tend to overhunt and unethically study any creature we discover, maybe it is better to leave these death worms in peace. There isn't any evidence that a sandworm, as seen in Dune, could exist, with our level of oxygen being too low to sustain a creature of that size. Deep underground can have strange organisms, since we are just now exploring life in the underworld. Perhaps now there are no sandworms, but in the past, when the earth could support the life of megalithic creatures like dinosaurs, Maybe there were great giant worms who could devour creatures whole, spew venom, and generate electric blasts before diving back to the safety of their realm, the underground. Maybe there are superorganisms who live in deserts and underground which resemble giant worms. 
If we dig deep enough underground, we have no idea what sort of living superorganisms or fossils of ancient beasts we will find. Today, its ancestors are antlions who lay traps in the sand and emerge when a victim slips in the pitfall. The Mongolian death worms who kill with a single touch. Bobbit worms who appear as vicious, jawed worms. The problems with zoology and cryptozoology is the presupposition that creatures of folk legend are too fantastical to realistically exist. Yet, any ancient stories of giant glowing worms swimming in the ocean would have been dismissed without hesitation. And yet we continually discover creatures like pyrosomes, which a hundred years ago would have been called a scientific impossibility. Lack of evidence does not mean lack of existence, not when the world is still shrouded in mystery. As for the Mongolian death worm, we are one discovery away from revealing a new page in biology that could lead to groundbreaking new understandings of life itself.